Good afternoon. Welcome to the Optimist Club Youth Leadership Award for Neighborhood Excellence. This is, I'm Bruce Light. I'm the president of the Optimist Club this year, and we welcome you. Um, this is one of our, if not the most important program we do. It's easily one of the most important. Um, what the young people in this room represent is the future. And these are people who've already stepped forward to be leaders. And they're carrying the weight of that on their shoulders. And we want to make sure that we honor them. So that's what today's all about. Now, we got a big program, so we're going to move along in a pretty good clip. But we want to make sure each one of the people that we're honoring has their moment because they deserve it. To start out with, we will say the um, Pledge of Allegiance. Then we'll have a moment of silence. Then I'll turn it over to Jennifer, who is our program chair. And we'll take it from there. In case you're wondering about who we are, who is the Optimist Club, what do we do? We smile a lot because we feel like we do a lot of good. But this is what we do. All of our programs are geared towards honoring people. And all but one are geared towards honoring youth. People are doing special things in our community. And now more than ever, that's more important than it's ever been. Our other program, we honor public service folks, which is also a very important thing, first responders and people of that nature. So you're welcome to join us at any time. And we're, one, we're so pleased to have you here with us today. So we'll turn and um, the flag's right here to my right. And we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with freedom and justice for all. All right, thank you all. Now we'd like to take a moment of silence to reflect on these wonderful, wonderful people that we're honoring today, to reflect on the people who support them and brought them to this point, to reflect on the people who are making this whole program possible, whether it's the members or whether it's the sponsors or whether it's the camera crew and the audio folks or the wonderful folks at Oakwood who will be serving us our meal. So let's take a moment and spend a moment of silence. Thank you. Um, before I introduce Jennifer Luckadoo, who I just introduced, I guess, but anyway, before I bring Jennifer up, I just want to share what is an optimist. And every meeting I try to do this because people always say, well, you know, what really is an optimist? Are they just always silver lining people? Well, I'll tell you about a friend of mine. He was a welder and he did specialized welding. He did welding on ships and he lived in Wilmington, North Carolina. And he was injured about 15, 20 years ago in an industrial accident. And I was talking to him one day and I said, I'm so sorry that you've been injured because he worked so hard to become this, this very advanced welder. And he said, oh, don't be. I said, well, what do you mean? I said, you can't work anymore. I said, you know, and he has cognitive issues is what happened in his accident. And he said, I've always wanted to start a landscaping business. He said, I love picking weeds and mowing grass. And he said, so that's what I'm gonna go do. So a few weeks ago, when a storm came up the coast of North Carolina, I called him just to check on him. And he said, yeah, my house flooded. And he said, tore my roof. But he said, we'll get that paid for. And I said, well, that's, that's good, but I hate to hear your house got torn up. He goes, oh, don't worry about it. He said, it tore up so many trees in town, I got more work than I can do. <laughs> and he said, so that's an optimist, right? I mean, it was bad. His house was torn up. The guy was disabled at a job that he loved, and yet he turned it into something else. And that's what we're all about. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Jennifer Luckadoo up, who has chaired this committee this year for us. And this is a big program. It takes a lot to put this on. So big round of applause, applause for Jennifer. Thanks, <laughs> Jennifer. Jennifer also handles our meals, 
and all the reservations and the, the menu and all like that. And so she does a phenomenal job. So we really appreciate what you do. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you again, Bruce. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this program. Some of you are very familiar with it. Some of you not so much so. Um, as Bruce said, we've been doing this program for a really long time. It's one of our most important programs and one of the most fun to plan and organize. And I am truly honored to be here today with all of you. The purpose of this program is to recognize the young people within the city of Lynchburg who have demonstrated a strong degree of volunteer, volunteerism and achievement at the community centers. And that's a really broad statement. We have a long list of criteria that was sent out to all of the center directors this year. And we're looking for qualities at home and within your family, because let's face it, every family has its own unique challenges. Moral character, also being involved in the community, demonstrating um, empathy, leadership skills, grades, and self-esteem. We also look at how these youth are involved within their schools. What type of unique experiences do they have? What are their strengths? What are their ideas? How do they engage in diversity and encourage diversity within their schools and within themselves? How do they participate within their community center? Are they leaders? Are they mentors? Do they encourage others in the center? And what are their life goals? How do they look at life? What are they planning to do when they finish their academic career? And what obstacles do they have to overcome? And then we also look at their poise. So there's a lot that goes into this award. And I can't thank the directors enough for the time that they spent putting this information together and sending it in to the Optimist Club. It is truly amazing. So I want to give a big round of applause for all the center directors. <laughs> As Bruce said, it takes a lot, of, a lot of people to pull this together. And I could not have done it without my co-chair, Nicole Gooding. Nicole, let's give her a round of applause. Nicole is a little more shy than I am, so she voluntold me to speak. Uh, <laughs> but let me tell you, Nicole did so much of the work in the background and, and the planning, and I could not have done it without her. So I really appreciate all of Nicole's help. This has definitely been a team effort. Um, I also want to thank this wonderful staff here at Oakwood Country Club that hosts all of their events. Um, uh, Sandra and Nancy, you'll see them fluttering around, and Willie and Ed are the chefs that prepared the food, so a big shout out to them. I also want to thank the City of Lynchburg Communications Department. We have um, Shaquille Cook here and Phil Spinner um, who are uh, videoing the event today, and this will be available later through a YouTube video, so we'll get that link out to all of the center directors. Um, so that the recipients can share that with family and friends. It will also be on the City of Lynchburg Public Access um, TV channel at, at some point in time. Um, also, um, a huge, huge thank you to our event sponsor. Um, as you can all imagine, costs have increased over the years and it takes quite a bit of financial support to pull this together. So, Patrick Prophet, where are you? Patrick Profit, Hurt and Profit, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you guys are wonderful, and we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for your generous support. So thank you so much for sponsoring this program, not only today, but since 2015. So appreciate that. Um, so. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and um, I'll, we'll dismiss each table and for lunch. We have an Italian buffet set up today. 
So if you'll go through the buffet line, come back, we'll spend about 20, 25 minutes having lunch, um, enjoying company with one another at your table. And then um, I will introduce our guest speaker, um, Mark Spain with uh, WSCT. We are thrilled to have Mr. Spain with us today. So we'll introduce him after lunch. So we're gonna go ahead and take a pause now um, so we can all enjoy a meal and fellowship together. And then I'll be back up in a little bit. Thank you all. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, continue with our program now. And again, I want to uh, thank Nicole Gooding, who worked and helped to secure our speaker for today's event. We are truly excited to have with us today Mark Spain. Did I mention Mark Spain was here today? <laughs> the Mark Spain. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. I'll give you a little bit of history about Mark. I don't, I don't know him um, well, other than what I've learned about him today and, and what I swiped off of the uh, WSCT uh, website. Yeah. Um, but a lot of this he shared with us already. So interestingly enough, Mark started off as a newspaper carrier. Some of you may not even remember what a newspaper carrier is. It's changed a little bit now, right? It didn't always just drive around the car and throw the paper out the window. Um, I don't know about you, Mark, but my brother was a paper carrier and he rode his bike, right? And he had little coupons, he had to collect money too. But, so Mark started off as a, as a newspaper carrier, first for the Cleveland Press and then the Plain Dealer. He's a native of Northeast Ohio, and uh, he went to school, he attended Cleveland State University. He graduated with a degree in communications. And what you may not know about him is he hosted a Friday afternoon jazz show as well. So he apparently has some musical talents. We'll have to learn more about that later, Mark. <laughs> but uh, we are truly honored to have him here. He has won a number of um, awards over the years, including the Best News Anchor in 2018 and again in 2019. Um, he has several Emmy, Associated Press, and Society of Professional Journalism awards with his name on them as well. So um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mark. Thank you, Thank you again. So much nice to have you here. <laughs> Good afternoon. How is everybody? I'm gonna set my little timer here so I don't go too long, because once I start talking, I can, I can get carried away. So, um, it's a pleasure to be here. I wanna thank the Optimist Club of Lynchburg for inviting me to attend and talk to all our honorees. Are you, is everybody here? Would you stand up, young people, and so we can give you a round of applause for being here with us. It's truly an honor to share some time with you this afternoon and celebrate what is something quite unique and wonderful. So um, I'm just happy to be here, right? As well as you are. As a matter of fact, we were talking, I, I know about Optimist Clubs, but I didn't know that there was one here in Lynchburg until uh, Nicole uh, sent me an email. I'm like, oh, there's one here, and now I want to become a member. So hopefully, hopefully they'll have me. Yes, I'm from Northeast Ohio. I'm a Browns fan. Who said boo? Are you from, are you from Pittsburgh? Oh, who cares? nobody cares about the Eagles. Um, but, you know, we paid a guy $230 million guaranteed, right? When we talk about success, $230 million guaranteed for five years, and he hasn't played the last couple of games. I want a job like that. Can I go back and play football again? Goodness. But, um, yeah. I'd love to do that. One of the things that I try to live by each and every day since we're talking to our optimists, 
who hopefully are eternal optimists. And I do this every single morning when I get up. This is my motto, to try and be just a little bit better than I was the day before. I am so blessed, I feel so blessed to get up in the morning and be a part of the day, right? Because there are a lot of people who don't. So to be here, to be with you, to be with you young people and celebrate your accomplishments, that's huge. I am honored to know you, to be in the room with you. This is wonderful. So, remember, right, to always try to be just a little bit better at whatever it is you're doing. Whether it's a better student, whether it's a better son, a brother, sister, right? Just a little bit better because you're making progress. And that's the best thing you can do, not only for yourself, but for those around you. There are four things that I tell my son when I drop him off at school each morning. I tell him, first and foremost, be kind. Second thing I tell him, choose wisely. The third thing is be a leader. We have too many followers. Be a leader. And the last thing I share with him before he goes is I want him to know each and every day, because my dad, God bless him, and my mom, but my dad, I was reflecting on this not too long ago, but my father, I don't believe I ever heard my father tell me that he loved me. He showed it in all the wonderful things that he did for us, take taking me skiing, taking us sledding, taking us to Niagara Falls, taking us here and there and everywhere and making sure we had a roof over our heads, food on the table, and all of those things. And when I went to high school in ninth grade and didn't do well in school and brought that first report card home because I went to a private high school in Cleveland, so it costs, you have to pay to go to a private school. And he said, I'm not, I'm not paying to send you to school to bring home grades like this. He said, if you want to go there, you're going to pay for it yourself because I have my paper route. And so I did. I graduated. So it was, I wasn't a great student, mind you, but I did graduate and I used my own money. But he helped me. See, he, didn't, he never said, I love you. But when I was in, a, we had this contest, right? Selling chocolate. And you would get half off of your tuition, whoever sold the most chocolate bars, right? That man took box after box after box to his job. And we sold more than double what the next kid did that showing he showed me that he cared that he loved me he may never have said it but he showed it but i want my son to hear me say it and so i tell him every day that i love him when i talk to my daughters i tell them that i love them we can't get enough of that there's too there isn't enough of it in our world right now which is why we're seeing so much division, right? If you watch the news at all, which I hope you do, I've met a couple of people who I need to get on board. I'm gonna go over there and crack the whip on them and make sure that, that they start watching. Um, but I can understand your reluctance to turn on the television because a lot of times you think that, you know, it's negative, we're not maybe following your political uh, slant or, you know, I'm not into, I'm not into any of that, uh, into the politics of that. Um, as I was telling my friends at this table, it's all about two things for me uh, in the job that I do, and that's being fair and being truthful. 
Those things matter more than anything, right? They do. And so hopefully, hopefully um, you'll start watching. I, I hope you do. <laughs> but yeah, we could, we could use so much more love, understanding, compassion, and kindness. We don't have enough of it. What's going on in the Middle East is, is horrible. You know, where's our humanity? What happened to it? Where is it? I feel it in this room because I'm optimistic. I am. I don't know if I was born that way. Made, I'm not sure how it happened, when it happened. But I see every day as an opportunity just to be a little better. Never take that for granted. Too many people take it for granted. I don't want to be one of them. I deal with enough of those people. I don't want to be one of those. I don't want my son to be one of those. I don't want my daughters to be one of those. Let's, put a, let's feed the universe a little more positive energy, right? I think we could change things. Let me tell you a little bit about our recipients. I looked at the applications that came in. Here's just a few things that they said. You know who you are, probably um, all of you. Confident and competitive, on a roll on every report card, kept their GPA up even going through foster care, humble and confident, academically focused and disciplined, loves learning new skills, dependable character and responsible behavior, those are all things that will make you successful, not only in the classroom, not only on the ball field or, or wherever, not just with people, but they will make you a success as a person. If you can't find a way to be successful in your own skin, it becomes much harder to share that with everybody else. And success is supposed to be shared. Right? Do we agree? Can we agree? So think about that for a minute. Think about how you, young people, I don't know if the camera's in the way of that young person back there. Hi. Hi back there. Um, but just think about what you can do to be successful for you because one day, one day, you're going to be sitting at a table like this. You'll be standing at a podium like this. You will, right, sh be sharing your success with your family, your friends. And to me, that is more important than a lot of other things. What car you drive, how much money you make, um, because those things are more tangible for people. You know what tangible is, young folks? Not really? So, who said that? How are you, young man? So, tangible is something that you can typically touch, right? But it's also something you can feel. And so, think about that. Be a, be a success for yourself. And share that success with everybody around you, in your classroom, in your home, Somebody has to. The baton is being passed to you. I'm doing that today, if you hadn't noticed. I'm handing you a baton so that you can hand it to somebody else. And you do that every time you get up. You're being a little bit better than you were yesterday. Use your traits, young people, to be the best self that you can be. I am so honored to be here with all of you that I just can't tell you. The, these things, being in this, this small community of like-minded individuals, is so refreshing. Let's keep it up. Let's not just let it be 
for one afternoon, for one hour or 90 minutes or whatever. Let's make it a lifetime goal. Can we, can we do that? Can we try to do that? Let's try. I know it gets hard sometimes. Trust me. Trust me. I know. Sometimes when I go to work and, and deliver the news, I'm like, oh gosh, another bombing, another school shooting, another this, another that. It can get overwhelming. I understand but I never lose hope because I know that one of you who's being recognized here today will take what we're trying to do, right? Which is change the energy of this this crazy world that we're living in and make it a little bit better. So be a little bit better so we can be a little bit better today than we were yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for allowing me to share this time with you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Let's give them all another big round of applause. Thank you, Mark. Come back up. <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead now and... Um, award all of the recipients. So what we're going to do is I will um, announce each center in alphabetical order by the name of the center. And if the director will come up and then the, the recipient will come up as well. And what I would like to ask is that each director say a few words about your recipient. Um, for those of you who don't have anything printed, I have some information on my laptop, so I'll pull that information up that you can reference. Um, and then, uh, Board President, Mr. Light, if you'll come back up as well. And uh, co sponsor, Nicole Gooding. I'll get you guys to help hand out. Um, yeah, um, no, I think you're okay where you are. So what, we, what we've got for everybody is we have a certificate of recognition for you. We have an Optimist Club medallion for each of you. And then we also have a $50 gift card for everyone. So um, let me get my laptop started first. So give me just a moment to do that. Okay, sorry about that. A little technical difficulty called no Wi-Fi. All right, so we are going to start with the Boys and Girls Club. So, um, Antonio, if you'll please come up with Gracie. <laughs> you'll introduce Gracie for us. Uh, this is Gracie Strange. I uh, nominated her because she's an excellent young woman. Um, she comes in the club. Um, she helps 
bake cookies and other desserts for the different members of all ages in the club. She also helps out staff, um, whatever we need. It's unusual to have someone come in and ask staff, how are you doing? Or are you okay? Um, most of the time, you were always worrying about them. So having someone like that, I'm going, this someone has good characteristics and have, it's gonna be a good human being. So she deserves this. <laughs> <laughs> So next up will be the College Hills Center, and we have, um, is it Sean? Shante, thank you, and um, I'll let you come up, and, um, Tasia, that was not able to be here with us today. So. Yes, uh, Sorry, like I said, apologize for this. Um, we had a um, situation where Tasia couldn't be here today to be present, and um, I'm filling in for one of my staff members um, at College Hill. Um, so I just want to kind of just give you a little background. I, I know Tasia a little bit, but not as much as the um, <clears throat> leaders at College Hill. But um, just in my interaction with Tasia, she was always willing to help out, whether it was cooking, helping with an art program with the younger kids, or just, like I say, just being an asset and just talking to the seniors that are um, there with the senior program. Um, I know she's a big asset to the College Hill community um, and the staff there at the College Hill, so um, she's very rewarding of this um, <clears throat> recognition. So um, I just want to say thank you and appreciate you guys for recognizing her for this. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll add a few things. <laughs> I'll add a few things from her um, nomination form. She uh, volunteers with the elementary age participants. She helps clean the center daily. Um, she also helps tutor the elementary age participants, and she tries very hard to achieve academic success. She has um, a dependable character and responsible behavior, and she's been very strong and capable in overcoming obstacles. She knows who she is, and she's well balanced. I love that. She knows who she is, and she's well balanced. So, uh, please let her know we are very sorry she couldn't join us today, but we are very proud of her and her accomplishments. So we'll send you off a support and gifts for her. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Daniels Hills. We have uh, the sponsor, Kayla, and Jubilee. You guys come on up. <laughs> Alrighty, it is my honor to nominate this young lady right here. She is um, outstanding. She's always giving herself in service of others um, and goes above and beyond. She's the epitome of a positive youth leader with sub superb leadership skills, character traits of humbleness, kindness, willingness, and diligence. Her creative joyous, her creative joyous nature grow glows when helping her peers with homework, crafts, activities, or lending a helping hand. Julie is always a leader when serving her community with, with a positive out, out, uh, attitude and an outlook on life. For since March, she has been serving uh, with our preschool playgroup. Um, I always have a joke with her and I, always, I was just telling her, we have, when we put up our closet, it's like a complex puzzle. You can't put something in when, until you put something else in. And she has learned it much quicker than I did. It took me a year and she has it down pat. Um, so I always try to brag on her with that. Um, she loves to bake treats and help out the community by going to serve them or serving them with um, some kind of pumpkin bread or cookies or anything and just sharing the love. Um, Jubilee, we are so proud of you and keep reaching for those stars and keep being you. <laughs> All right, next up we have the Diamond Hill Center, Mickey and Ava. Come on up.
Good evening. Good afternoon. So um, Diamond Hill wants to recognize our participant, Ava. Ava came to us this summer and uh, through her grandmother who participates at our senior program. And um, my colleagues and I got together and decided who to recognize. But we went one step further and we went to a couple of the youth there to see who they would like to have this recognition for. And that's how you really got this award, is through your peers. <clears throat> one of the great things that they said about Ava was that she's a quiet leader, which speaks a lot because everybody wants to be loud and sing, where she sits back and observes everything. And because of her good nature, because she's humble, because she's self-controlled, they are inspired to be more like her. When we need anything done at the center, she's always there to help provide that. And she's just a good, a good young lady. Um, one thing that I do like that she said about her is that she used to be mean. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. We don't believe it. Yeah, and, but she said that she outgrew that through her maturity. So your maturity is really showing through we love you, Ava, and we are so proud of you. with Mackenzie and a Ch uh, Chavion. I probably mispronounced your name, so I apologize. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read my speech. Um, all of us over at the Fairview Center are very proud of Akavion, also known as KK. He is our go-to guy. He often helps around our center without even being asked. And when we do ask for help, he is quick to jump in with a happy heart. KK is mature beyond his years and is very teachable. If we ever do have to correct him, he owns up to his mistakes, apologizes, and figures out how to do better next time. He gets his schoolwork done quickly and also helps our younger children with their homework. The other kids at our center love being around KK and so do all of us staff. We can't wait to see the amazing things you do as you continue to grow throughout life. Congratulations on your award, KK. Next up, we have the Jefferson Park Center, Wes and Dixie. <laughs> All right, hello. So Jefferson Park has nominated Dixie Stratton to receive the Y Lane Award. Um, once I got the email that we needed to put our nomination in, me and the other staff put our heads together and it probably took us maybe 15 seconds to realize that Dixie uh, was the best choice for us. So I've been at Jefferson Park for since March of this year and Dixie started uh, maybe a month or two after that. She was with us the end of last school year, all through the summer and now into this school year. And it has been an absolute pleasure uh, watching her turn into the fine young woman and leader she is. Um, as Ms. Mickey said, she's a silent leader. She leads by example. And I know that if sometimes the other kids are doing something wrong, I see, I look at Dixie, she's giving me that look out of the corner of her eye. <laughs> she does not succumb to peer pressure. Uh, Dixie loves to volunteer at the center. In fact, sometimes we have to tell her, Dixie, sit this one out. Let, let the other kids do some work because she would do it all herself if we let her. And it's evident from talking to her mom and her aunt that um, that is not just an act, and it also carries over into her home as well. Um, 
Yeah, Dixie loves to dance. She's quite the dancer this center. Uh, she loves to play hide and seek. And Dixie um, has been quite the help. We have homework time in the center, and Dixie is very good about coming in, completing her homework. If she doesn't have homework, she will come and ask me for a worksheet that she can work on, just furthering that education. And when she's done, on top of that, she will help the younger kids with their work. And when I asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up, she said, I want to be a teacher because I like helping the other kids with their work. So Dixie, we cannot think of anybody more deserving of this award and keep doing what you do. Congratulations. I want to recognize the Jubilee Center, and we have Antonio and Marlon. All right. Good afternoon. Um, I've been knowing Marlon since he was three years old. My, my wife, Denise Davis, used to babysit him, so it was hard. If you feed something, for a long time, they'll keep coming back, so he's gonna be at my house tomorrow also. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, my, my son was an Optimist Club um, recipient years ago, and he's a mentor to Marlon. And Marlon, to, Marlon just exhibits a lot of character to me. So he does the right things even when nobody's look, listening or looking. Um, he wants to be an NBA basketball player. Most kids his age do, but I said, <laughs> long time ago, Marlon, if you want to achieve that, you have to be a beast in the classroom also, because nobody's going to give you a scholarship if you're making C's. So he's an honor roll student. He's a volunteer. <laughs> he volunteers at the Daily Bread. He volunteers in his church. Um, he was a teen helper at Jubilee. Um, so he was one of the voices of reason during the summer when everybody was off the hinges. Um, I think this, this summer he, he did some exercise. He was dropping pennies, what, 10 pennies? Mm, and 25. 25 pennies, so he'd take a step, drop a penny, take a step, drop a penny. And as I was watching this happen, I knew it was, um, it was a painful exercise. I couldn't do it. But I whispered in his ear, I said, the difficult, the difficult can be done immediately but the impossible takes a little while longer. So if he wants that dream of being the NBA, he's gonna to have to continue to work hard. Congratulations, Mark. Right. All right, we've kept you waiting long enough. It's time for the Yoder Center, we've got Therese and Haven. You guys come on up. <laughs> Hello everybody, this is Haven, the Yoder Center. And like um, so many other kids that we've already talked about today, he has that lead by example, know who I am, don't be, be swayed by peer pressure quality that is so wonderful in a young leader. I also want to tell you that Haven is an excellent student and an excellent, caring, and fun older brother. Um, we have a lot of kids at the Yoder Center, and Mrs. King is with me there, and sometimes she'll say to the kids, take a page out of Haven's book. And she says it from time to time, and we kind of all know what that means. And a little while ago, a young man was doing something without being asked, without a reward attached to it. He just did it because he was being helpful. And he looked at Mrs. King and he said, I took a page out of Haven's book. Aww. So, <laughs> yes, so I think that, um, that leading by example works. So we're very proud of Haven. Okay. 
Okay, for those of you who just sat down, for all of the um, award recipients, I'm gonna ask you to stand and come up one more time, please. And we're gonna give you all a big round of applause but you all come up. Everybody come up, if you just got an award, come up. Four and four. Now turn it back over to uh, Club President Bruce Light. Um, Bruce, I believe you have one more box in your pocket. I am hoping that uh, you wouldn't mind presenting that box to Mr. Spain and then closing us out with the Optimist Cree. Would that be all right? That would be great. Thank you so great. much. A big round of applause for Mark Spain. <laughs> Certainly, if you choose, you can go out on the road and be a motivational speaker <laughs> and make a difference in this world. But thank you so much. Thank you. We have one of our medallions for you. Thank you. And appreciate all you've done. We're with pride. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much. Real quick, big round of applause for Jennifer and her committee. For Oakwood, all the staff here, and all they do. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> somebody got my attention. Um, Patrick Prophet and Hurt and Prophet, making this possible. So, Mark Spain again, can't say that enough. And all of the leaders of the neighborhood facilities, because without you, we can't do that. And of course, all of our award recipients. So thank you all. And we will close with the Optimist Creed, and it's on the back of your... I have been in this club for how many, how many years is it? 20 some years or something? And I still can't remember the Optimist Creed, so I have to read it, so feel free to read it. It's also up here if you have really good eyes. So promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. To talk health, health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet. To make all your friends feel that there is something in them. To look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true. To think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. To forget the mistakes of the past and press on to greater achievements for the future. To wear a cheerful countenance at all times. To give every living creature you meet a smile. To give so much time to improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the trouble. And there's one thing I forgot there to do, and that's thing. the 50-50. That's right, I forgot that, yep. too. So right. here's what we're going to do. We're, right. President, past president, here we go. Okay. Yeah. She, she was so, past president, she does all this. Right. So <laughs> this officially concludes the um, Y Lane program. We have a little bit of club business to do, so you guys stick around. Um, I don't know if we want this on TV or not, but no, it would be fine. <laughs> uh, we do a little 50-50. Little um, Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you. This is just for the club members. We'll see if anybody wins the pot of money today. We play this
Time. Isn't he exempt my now or something? Didn't he win like the last four times? Okay, the rest of us, we're still in it. We still have a chance. Uh, so uh, just to further explain what we do, it's a little uh, in-house kind of club, 50-50. It's $2 a pop, and then um, the 50% the goes obviously to the winner of the other stays with the club to help fund our programs. I also want to um, mention that we have a few guests here today that are um, uh, going to be joining the club. So I just want to recognize those folks. I forgot to do that earlier. So we have uh, Laurel Hovey from da Daily Bread. Laurel. Yeah. <laughs> Dalton Hodges from Brownstone Properties. Chris Johnson from Select Bank. And, and some other guy we just found on the street. Um, what's his name again? Mark Spain with WSET. <laughs> Uh, if anyone else is interested in learning more about the club, please reach out to any of the club members. We all have these badges. Um, we have some applications. We'd love to tell you more about the club and would love to have you join us. Um, so this will officially conclude our program. There is an opportunity for photos. So anyone who would like to take photos, come on up um, and we'll all be around and available to be in your photo or not in your photo. But um, if you've got guests that, you, you know, that, uh, mom, dad, aunts, uncles, friends, whatever, anybody that wants to be in the photos, come on up. We'll definitely have a photo opportunity immediately following this. So thank you all again for coming. Greatly appreciate your time and have a wonderful rest of the day.